Hello, hello, hello. This is Tamika Peters, President and CEO of Grow Your Nonprofit, where we help startups, small and stagnant nonprofits grow through fundraising strategies, strategic planning, and so much more. Guys, today you're in for a treat. I have my special guest here, Tiffany. She is with Empowerment Farm. We will talk about her startup nonprofit and the strategies she's using to grow her nonprofit. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the sponsors of my podcast. Trinity Life Foundation Naples, helping at-risk youth through their enrichment programs. AVID, that stands for the Association of Haitians Living Abroad. They just opened an amazing support center right here in the beautiful Fort Myers, where they will help you with immigration support, utility billing, and so much more. Also, Facts Truce, they just received a grant with the CDC to raise awareness of COVID-19 and vaccine resources. Best Insurance USA, a Florida Blue provider. They will help you with health insurance, life insurance, business insurance, and so much more. Last but not least, Premier Mobile Health Center. They will help you with all of your health care needs, whether or not you have insurance. So, guys, like I said, my special guest here, Tiffany. How are you doing, Tiffany? Hey, I'm great. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Would you please share with our audience a little bit about yourself and why you founded the Empowerment Farm? Sure. So my name is Tiffany Lehman. I um, am a true Napoleon, born and raised in Naples, Florida. Whoa. And yeah, not many of us. No, but, not uh, many. Nope. And like most growing up here, I swore I'd be off and never come back. And here I am. <laughs> so um, when left for about 10 years, got married, started a family and obviously wow. Naples called me back. Uh, it wow. was home. So um, I grew up riding horses, not on a farm, but I loved horses and always had a dream, an absolute dream from a young age to um, to have a farm. So um, kind of the uncommon or common story path, really, uh -huh. that life takes you on multiple different directions. Yeah, and yeah. I um, started when we moved to Naples. My for my oldest daughter now is a year old, and my father um, was a longtime State Farm agent and said, "Really, well, come work with me, you know, wow. and get settled." And my degree, uh, my education was in gerontology. So really, totally Interesting. different. Yeah, Interesting. Wow. <laughs> I mean, again, not something you hear of very often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I thought Naples, right? Great to support a degree like gerontology. <laughs> that is a great career yep. path. Yeah. So. Um, um, I came to work with him to kind of get settled and lo and behold, God, uh, I always say sucked into the family trap, oh, right? That's every parent's dream, <laughs> Yeah, you know? it is. It is. Yeah. And it was wonderful. Um, State Farm was going through some corporate changes. So I said, love you, Dad. Appreciate it. But I'm going to open my own agency. Wow. Um, so in 2009, um, opened up an insurance agency. And after almost 15 years of, um, of ownership, agency ownership, and literally opening the doors with not a single client. So lots to learn. Wow. Um, great uh, hands-on education. Um, 15 years in, I decided that my true calling and my absolute passion and my dreams needed to be filled. And uh, that's when I started Empowerment Farm. Wow, interesting. So I have two questions for yes. you. you. You mentioned you went away for 10 years and mm -hmm. you came back. Where did you move to? Yeah, so I went, I jumped around a little bit. Uh -huh. Started um, college at the University of Central Florida. Okay. My husband and I met there. I then had a job opportunity offered to me working and training um, at a big riding facility. So oh, training wow. horses, which was my passion. Wow. So we moved to Tampa, mm -hmm. fulfilled that, and then my husband decided he wanted to go on to veterinary school. So we moved to whoa, Gainesville. Whoa. Um, both graduated from the University of Florida yeah. at that point. So that, that that's really interesting um, because I do believe in um, like God has a purpose for you oh, and he uses you. So it sounds like you were born and reared in mm -hmm. Naples, and you went off for your training mm -hmm. and to equip you to come back here. And start the empowerment farm, that's and that's a perfect not by way to mistake. Say it. And um, that's that's really interesting. So you mentioned that you started your your own insurance agency mm -hmm. with zero client base. Yes. And the reason why I'm asking Tiffany this question because when you start a new nonprofit, you pretty much start with no donors, right? Right. You're starting from ground zero. How were you able to build your business? Um, lots of really just connections and resources, mm -hmm. um, hitting the pavement running. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a jump in head first kind yeah. of person, yeah. so I, um, am not afraid to take risks. 
And I think starting a business, any kind mm-hmm. of business, mm-hmm. nonprofit included, yeah. um, you have to have such a drive yeah. um, that those really long, hard nights, weeks, months, years, yeah. Yeah. you just keep going. Yep. Um, so we had a lot of great um, input. Some of my clients were with me till the very end when I sold. And um, I think we just built a really great family yeah. Yeah. connection yeah. Um, that it led from starting with a few clients, building trust, recommendations. Yeah. Right? Those referrals yeah. were everything. Yeah, so yeah, that's just, very important. Mm-hmm. So just talking to you, I know we met you at the the the. Um, the Leadership volunteer Collier Expo. Volunteer yes. Expo uh, last month. And you mentioned that you started a new nonprofit and I saw your literature and I went on your website. I'm like, wow, six months, right? Yes. It's been six months, guys, since she started her nonprofit. And she she looks like she's been around for 10 years. Yes. <laughs> and and I, I say that to say, when you told us your story, because we before we started recording this podcast, we, we had a conversation mm-hmm. and I said, it makes sense. You build your business from the ground up and you knew the importance of strategic planning. Yeah. You knew the importance of a nonprofit and the for-profit. They align, right? They do. The only difference is its tax exemption status, right. but you treated it like a business. Walk us through how you, once you just started, you want to start a nonprofit. What, what systems you knew you needed to have in place to start the foundation? Sure, absolutely. So first, really building the foundation, what I say is the true roots. Mm-hmm. Um pun intended in the sense of what we do at a yeah, farm yeah. with um, the horticulture side. Um, but I knew that I had to surround myself by really great yeah. people who had the skill sets where I didn't mm-hmm. um, or wanted to get better at. Right. Um, so I literally started having conversations and meetings mm-hmm. with people and said, this is my idea. This is my vision. Um, and it was really overwhelming and truly empowering in the sense that so many people jumped and attached themselves to the mission mm-hmm. immediately mm-hmm. and wanted to be involved. Um, so it provided an excellent foundation yeah. for me to start to grow on by connecting those people, those resources um, to help support. Mm-hmm. And through that, just understanding the process of filing alone, right, for yeah. 501 yeah. and making sure that we didn't go through the hoops of having it rejected multiple times. Right, right. Um, you know, I'm a hurry up and wait kind of person. So everything that I want to do, I want to make sure it was done right the first right. time. So I right. wasn't waiting on somebody else to get back to me. Yes. Um, and we got our approval within mm-hmm. five months. And wow. people said, that's not, that's unheard of, but we never got it kicked back, right? So yeah. I had it reviewed. Yeah. So just knowing going into it um, from that business mindset of what is going to make it successful mm-hmm. when you start, not trying to just learn along the way, the right. hard time, right. getting input from a lot of different people and resources mm-hmm. um, has really supported the yeah. growth of the organization yeah. already. And we, we also, before we started recording the podcast, we also talked about the importance of selecting the right board members and I like the strategy you utilized and you mentioned it being in your bylaws as well Mm -hmm. that you you start before they become a board member Mm -hmm. they start as a advisory committee member Mm -hmm. why that strategy Yeah, so really, um, you know, your first board, Mm -hmm. um, generally, in terms of speaking, they say is your healthiest board because they are very hand-picked, selected people that are typically close to you. Um, I don't recommend family, maybe (laughs) friends on a sense, but people that I've, you know, uh, fortunately have served on other boards Mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. before, have known really well in a professional setting, so I know how they operate uh, professionally and morally. Um, So the first board initiation was very, very strong. Five of us, we kept it small too to make sure we were all on the same page in the development and through that we said you know we know how some boards can get tainted. It's just, mm-hmm. it happens. Mm-hmm. And so that as a founder is one of the things that I worry about. And I just want to make sure we're doing our due diligence. Right. And so part of that was establishing that a prior to a board member being um, recruited for the board, they must serve on one of our committees for a minimum of a year. Mm-hmm. That way we just know how they operate right. with the organization, mm-hmm. with other people in a professional setting, mm-hmm. um, how they hold themselves and the standards yeah. we want to hold them to. Yeah, yeah, that's very very important. So you you have your nonprofit in place, you have your your board, you have that structure. Now what? What is the next step? The next step. So um, I, I chuckle because the next step or the step that we're in the phase we're in is the fundraising phase. The fundraising um, phase. The fundraising phase. Isn't that very fun? It's so fun. 
fun so raising. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> fun raising. I'm you learning know. the fun part. So yeah. um, I was telling it to me that, you know, part of it is where before I sold a product and, and had mm-hmm. income and now it's I'm selling a, a vision, right. a dream right. and a mission. Um, so part of that comes with a different conversation, but at the same time, just sharing that and hoping people really attach to that. So we are developing out the farm right now. Um, we are, you know, from the small construction of redoing the existing structures that we're on mm-hmm. and getting them mm-hmm. up to um, code, yes. safety, all yeah. of the, the yeah. specs and beautification that we want. Um, and with the goal um, of meeting um, the ja- the end of January mm-hmm. kind of date that we've set for yeah. ourselves to start um, the mindfulness and wellness mm-hmm. program. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, you have to check out the Empowerment Farms website. What's the website? Thank you. Empowermentfarm.org. <laughs> I should have known. Easy that. enough. It's, it's so easy. <laughs> but, but just what will be there, the renderings that's on the website, is just truly amazing. It's like a like a dreamland. Oh, it's it's so you. gorgeous. I know the community is anticipating it. I know before we started recording the podcast, you mentioned there's nothing like it yeah. in Southwest yeah. Florida. Actually, in the country, Actually, right? there's um, not much on the East Coast of Florida, a little right. bit over on the West Coast, but not, um, not the blend of the horticulture mm-hmm. animal. Yeah, very important, very important. So w- with that said, building out this farm, mm-hmm. you're embarking on the capital campaign. Mm-hmm. What what strategies are you going to use in order to reach your goal and then become a sustainable nonprofit? Because as we know, our sure. savvy donors, yep. they want to see that their investment will be around for generations yeah. to come. And that, I think that's very important to be sustainable. It's critical, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Um, again, just like any business, having a having a plan. Mm-hmm. Um, we have our three-year strategic plan built in, and we discussed about the endowment, yeah. um, which is funny because I, I, you know, a big part of our farm is sustainability. Yeah. In yeah. people and in culture and what we're doing and what we're promoting. Um, so the sustainability of the farm itself mm-hmm. alone and mm-hmm. just making sure that we are going to be here for many years to come well beyond my years yeah um of course is always the intent right and you want to see your your dream um flourish and so building in on that with our fundraising efforts and making sure our endowment um the schedule for that and the percentage Mm -hmm. um of of holding back certain on the donations that we receive uh, making sure we're building a strong healthy endowment Mm -hmm. fund Mm -hmm. for the what ifs and the future growth. Right. We um, already have dreams well beyond our three-year strategic plan, more into a five-year. Mm-hmm. Um, but you mentioned the renderings and just having the dreams and visions yeah. in your head yeah. now coming um, on paper in renderings to yeah. fruition. You want to make sure that you are um, securing that yeah. for many years to come. Yeah, that's very important. And and I like um, what I saw also on your website, the naming opportunities. Yes. Um, yeah. That that w- guys, if you don't know what that is, a naming opportunity. Say if you have a building, or a classroom, or even a bench or mm-hmm. a tree, yeah. people can have an opportunity to name that, and they make a donation, and then it's uh-huh. recognized. Uh, that's one of the strategies. Another strategy: if you have a, a donor who comes in and and, and gives to your um, your nonprofit mm-hmm. for your capital campaign, and and you, we also mentioned having matching funds. Yes. To continue with that so that's very important so if someone wanted to get involved walk us through that process if they wanted to become a donor or a volunteer or what are the the different options people can come and, and help with the empowerment farm sure lots of options right with yeah. any um any startup or really any nonprofit and yeah. volunteers yeah. are always um you know hold such a, a special and dear place for nonprofits. um we rely on them tons we've had great mm-hmm. so our programs um will be led by certified instructors which will be volunteers yes and then also volunteers who say i just want to come help in the garden yeah. or i want to help Clean horse manure. I mean, there is oh, amazing. Wow. Right? How many? Some something people say for everyone. <laughs> there is something for everyone. Some people say I don't want to get dirty at all. Great, we will put you in, and you can help us in the kitchen. Yeah, like in yeah. teaching nutrition programs. Um, so there are tons of opportunities for volunteers. They're kind of endless, and really, we do have a, a wide variety of, of opportunities there in that in that department. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, donors. The naming opportunities, yeah. like you yeah. mentioned, um, tons of, especially being new and kind of growing, yeah. really growing from the ground up. Um, 
um, great naming opportunities, whether, like you said, I love it, a tree. That's yeah. something. We have a gorgeous oak tree on yeah. the property, and I keep thinking someone's going to come and say, I want to yeah. put my name on yeah. that. Um, to the buildings, to the horse stalls, um, tons of opportunities there. Um, and some, you know, the, the planned um, giving. Oh, planned giving uh, is very important. Yeah, leaving their legacy. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think many nonprofits will turn away creative opportunities. No. Of course, you know, maybe there's some areas you want to be, be a little cognizant of. Put your put your business mind on and maybe some relationships are the healthiest yeah. to take funds from. Um, but just be aware of yeah. that and make sure it always aligns with your mission. Yeah. When when I first learned of your organization and you, you, you mentioned the words planned giving and you mentioned the words in endowment it made my heart happy because unfortunately in southwest florida a lot of nonprofits shy away from planned giving because they're intimidated sure but there are a lot of agencies out there that will help you walk you through that you don't have to know what entails a, a donor advice right. fund or a charitable remainder trust um having those systems in place and having the right people to help you yeah makes all the difference because we're leaving money on the table. Right. We're leaving money on the table. Right. Now, the money I understand is not immediate, say, as a, a yeah. donation or from a, funds from a fundraising event, but we always want to think about long-term sustainability, exactly. so that's really important. So, well, great job on that. you mentioned part of it, educating your yeah. board, right? Educating you know, your like, board. Hey, I might not know all about this, but my board members can have these conversations as well. Right, and, and, right. And it and also fine. starts with the board because mm -hmm. say, even your board could leave a legacy, so Absolutely. say if a board member has a life insurance policy, mm -hmm. say for $100,000, yeah. they could leave 10% to right. the uh, empowerment, empowerment. form. That's mm -hmm. what? That's $10,000. Yeah. So everyone can give. Some There are, are even some cases where board members take out a life insurance policy specifically for that they, nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, I can't give right now, but... If they're young, the life insurance policy would be, you know, a lot less. Of course, if they don't mm -hmm. have any pre-existing conditions. Yep. But that's another way. So there are a Absolutely. lot of creative strategies. So before we wrap up, I told you it goes yeah, by fast. It does. <laughs> so before we wrap up, I'm curious to to learn what what did you find out that did, you didn't know when you, you were starting a nonprofit because I know you have business starting the business mm -hmm. but starting a nonprofit what was the difference and what was like an aha moment wow I didn't know that when starting a nonprofit oh probably um, a couple things I didn't realize how hard it would be and I know I've been mm -hmm. educated and you mentioned before too with the um, the part of the fundraising aspect right <laughs> again um, I'm just nervous to ask for the money I want to, to share my mission and everyone yeah. just jump on and yeah. catch and throw yeah. money at it because it's an awesome opportunity yeah. um, so that's been a challenge um, to just massage the words yeah. right yeah. know how I want it to come across without it being pitchy I never want someone to hand over donation and, and have a regret for it right. no matter right. what it if it's my use for it or just their feeling of, oh, that was a little too much for me to spend right yeah. now. It's got to feel good, right? Yeah. We're in the nonprofit world yeah. to feel good for everybody. Um, but we value every dollar and we and we care. Yeah. We're very, very particular yeah. about how that's going to be used. Um, so that's probably been the biggest thing. And also, I mean, it's just the re-education of like really surround yourself by good people. Mm -hmm. The areas that I know that I lack and I've made sure that yeah. I have, um, have the resources and um, my co-founders are just absolutely dynamic um ashley who's our property manager yeah. she has the zoology background and um the education on the horticulture side where mm -hmm. um i don't have that so i mean she's of yeah. value yeah. um and then missy lamont who's been tremendous at um assess uh, you know assisting me in um kind of the developmental yeah. stage so yeah. those people are critical in in the support yeah. that you build Mm -hmm. for your nonprofit. And, and you know, now that I think about it, you know, most founders and, and even current nonprofits, they, they, when it comes to asking for money, mm -hmm. I, I think what it is, this is just my assessment, is that when you're in business, you're used to receiving something tangible for your investment, yes. right? Correct. So with a nonprofit, you're selling a vision, you're mm -hmm. selling a mission, and it's not really tangible per se right. because it's a program mm -hmm. or service. But I think you're not really asking, you're really doing it. That's what a charity does mm -hmm. the, for the betterment of our society. Yes. So so thinking about that, you also mentioned building relationships. That's very important. So the relationships and you let them know about your mission and they see your passion. Yeah. 
<laughs> and they and and like you said, they want to know how they can get involved and how they can give. So it'll happen. It'll happen naturally. Thank you. And then those times where you are afraid to ask. That's where you have your your pamphlets and your information yes. with with the <laughs> pricing them and stuff. It's like, well, you always want to start at the top and then work your right. way down. Right. But 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 you're definitely going to be fine. Thank I see you. a lot of blessings for you in the future because, I mean, you have the business acumen. You understood the assignment yeah. from the <laughs> yes. start that this is the business and we're going to run it like a business. So, Tiffany, I know. Uh, earlier in the show, we we did put your website on the screen. But if anyone wanted to email you yeah. or call you, is there uh, sure. any information you'd like to give out? Sure. So everything is on our website. But of course, um, Tiffany at empowermentfarm.org um, is my email. I'm always always on it, probably like most of us. We're always, you know, yeah. always checking and filling in. Um, and then my phone number, um, it's just the uh, farm office line. So you can probably get me just about any time any time of day with questions or um, interests would love to hear from you uh -huh. do we have an opening date so we do so we're doing our ribbon cutting in january okay and then um the end of january i don't have a specific date yet on what we're going to do for the program because i'm working it out mm -hmm. with the instructors mm -hmm. right now um but end of january so probably that last week in january will be our uh, wellness and mindfulness and then we're starting a little um founder initiative for Ooh. our green thumb program Ooh. so that's to come soon very exciting thank you so much Steph Tiffany thank you Tamika so guys I hope you learned something here from a startup nonprofit of put, using the business acumen of starting your nonprofit. And it's not too late if, if you already have your nonprofit, just shifting gears, but most importantly, a roadmap. And that's your strategic plan that has your short term and long term goals, as well as your goals and objectives to guide and lead you through your growth period and then sustainability. So I really enjoy um, listening and hearing that the Empowerment Forum is thinking about being sustainable with an endowment. They're already implementing their plan giving and, and uh, gift acceptance policy. So when that million dollar donor comes along and want to donate to the organization, they're ready to accept the gift and they're not intimidated. So guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget, we do have Grow Your Nonprofit merch on our Etsy store. You can find that on our website. Stay tuned for more Grow Your Nonprofit podcast episodes. Introducing the Grow Your Nonprofit merch in our Etsy store. So go on over to our Etsy store today and explore our collection. Pick your favorites. By doing so, you're not only elevating your style, but also contributing to the Grow Your Nonprofit mission. Thank you for being part of our community and thank you for your dedication to making a difference. We appreciate your support and we can't wait to see you rocking our Grow Your Nonprofit merch. Now stay tuned for more empowering content on Grow Your Nonprofit Podcast. And until our next time, keep growing and keep giving.